Hey folks, thanks for checking out this video. This is my YBR125 from 2011. It's about to hit 43,000 miles and I need to check the valve clearances. It's quite important that this job is done and done correctly. This video will outline the process and hopefully allow you to get the job done properly for yourself. If you're not confident with the functionalities of four stroke engines and the concept of top dead center, I would suggest doing a little bit more research before going any further. I've included a link to a good video explaining what you need to know in the comments. To complete this job, you'll need an eight millimeter socket wrench, 24 millimeter wrench combination preferably. Uh, I used an adjustable, eight millimeter wrench, preferably a combination, a set of long nose pliers and a feeler gauge set. This job needs to be done when the engine is completely cold. Completing the job when the engine is hot or even warm will lead to incorrect calibration and potentially irreparable damage. Before we look at the engine, we're gonna put the bike on the center stand and shift it up into second gear. Now you don't need to turn the engine on to shift it up into second gear, or you shouldn't need to. Next, you wanna remove your cam chain cover with the eight millimeter socket wrench that we talked about earlier. Once your cam chain cover is off, you can move over to the other side and take off your valve covers. Now, these are gonna be on there quite tight. Um, obviously, there's a lot of oil flying around inside these parts of the engine. I think it's important to mention that if you see any split seals when you're taking off your covers on this job, uh, it's probably best to get those replaced. Before we measure our valve clearance, we need to get the piston into top dead center position on the compression stroke. This relieves pressure on the valves, allowing us to take our clearance readings. To do this, we're gonna rotate the rear wheel forward. Uh, this is why we put the bike into second gear, because it allows for easier rotation of the wheel. If you're standing on the left of the bike, rotate the wheel anti-clockwise. We need to get the marking on the cam chain sprocket to meet up with the crank casing marking. You can more finally adjust the valve position by bouncing the wheel forwards against the final drive as I'm doing here. You can see the exhaust valve closing and opening as we rotate the wheel. Once the markings line up, move around to the other side of the bike and test for movement between the rocker arms and the valves. There should be movement in both of the rocker arms. If there's not, it could be possible you've got the engine in top dead center on the exhaust stroke as opposed to the compression. When you're certain the piston is at top dead center on the compression stroke, you can then grab the feeler gauge set and measure the distance between the rocker arm screw and the top of the valve. Here are the YBR125 valve distance specifications. It's a good idea to take a picture or note down these for reference later. I'm going to measure the exhaust valve first. I'm starting with a 0.15 millimeter gauge feeler and I'm going to try and fit it between the rocker arm screw and valve. The 0.15 millimeter feeler gauge was too big, so I'm now gonna try the 0.13 millimeter. Same again with the 0.13, that was too big. Uh, so I'm now trying a 0.10, that's a 0.1 millimeter gauge, and that goes in. Uh, it's a bit loose. Um, the ideal feel that you get from it is it's tacky, so it's relatively difficult to pull out the gauge once you've put it in. We now know that on the exhaust valve, the valve clearance is between 0.1 millimeter and 0.13 millimeter. My feeler gauge set doesn't have a 0.12 um, gauge on it. So I actually combined a 0.08 and a 0.04 just to check whether the clearance was bang on or not. It turns out the exhaust valve was in spec, so now we need to repeat this process on the intake valve, bearing in mind the intake valve clearance specifications are slightly different to the exhaust. My intake valve was actually at 0.13 millimeters, which means I need to reduce the clearance between the rocker arm screw and the valve top. To do this, you'll need your correct feeler gauge for whichever valve you're calibrating, the eight millimeter wrench, and your long nose pliers. First, place the wrench onto the lock bolt, which is fastened tight on top of the rocker arm. Pinch the small square top of the rocker arm screw with the pliers, 
and turn the wrench anti-clockwise whilst applying good pressure to the pliers. The lock nut will rotate loose and allow for free adjustment of the rocker arm screw. Loosen off the lock nut to ensure you have enough free thread, then grab your feeler gauge. Place the loose feeler gauge between the valve and rocker screw as we did when testing the clearance. You can then tighten the screw against the feeler gauge until the movement is tacky. Once the clearance is set, you can finger tighten the lock nut. Grab your pliers and 8mm wrench and tighten the lock nut against the rocker arm again whilst gripping the screw top firmly with your pliers. Check that the feeler gauge still has the same level of tackiness to ensure the screw was not tightened whilst the lock nut was being set. Spin the wheel so that the cam chain rotates twice. Double check everything you've adjusted and if in any doubt refer to the torque specs in your manual. Once all your checks are completed you can reinstall your valve and cam chain covers. Um, double check your seals to make sure they've not split. You can now turn on the engine and if there was clicking before there could potentially be a much smoother sound waiting for you. <laughs>